What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell and this is The End Times. We've been working on a mini-series diving into what the different descriptions of hell given to us in scripture really mean. And we received a comment on part 4 saying, All lies, lake of fire is the Holy Spirit, please don't teach. What? Now, we get a lot of out there comments, but this one really shook me. So let's address these claims and dive right into this. The term lake of fire is actually only used four times in scripture, all in the book of Revelation and only in two chapters, chapter 19 and chapter 20. So let's read those verses in their entirety real quick. Revelation chapter 19, verse 19 through 21. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse, and all the birds were gorged with their flesh. This is the battle at Armageddon that will take place after the wrath of God. They'll face the rider on the white horse whose name is the Word of God and he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Revelation 19:11 through 16 Therefore this rider is Jesus because Jesus is the Word of God, John 1, and he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Revelation 17 verse 14. For more on Jesus being the Word of God, check out our video Who or What is the Word of God which is under our Nuggets of Truth category or playlist. So these aren't good people. These are people who are anti-God. They're literally warring against God himself. And what's their punishment? The beast and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire alive, and the kings and their armies are slain with the sword. Now what about Satan? Well, he's captured and chained in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 3. After the thousand years, Satan is released. This is where our second verse comes into play. Revelation chapter 20 verse 7 through 10. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison, and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth, and surrounded the camp of the saints, and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So Satan is thrown into the lake of fire to join the beast and the false prophet, but John doesn't leave it there. He goes on to say that they will be tormented day and night forever and ever in the lake of fire. All right, let's read our last two verses, which picks up right where we left off. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire only seems to be a punishment for those who refuse to accept salvation. John 3, 16 through 21. Those who refuse to follow Jesus. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 through 27. And those who refuse to do the will of the Father. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Let's now take a quick look at the Holy Spirit. Psalms chapter 51 verse 11 says, Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. This is David's desperate plea to God after Nathan the prophet came to him and chastised him for not only taking Bathsheba from Uriah, but also having Uriah carry his own death note. When David saw his sin and the vast weight of it, he broke down and desperately cried out to God not to take his presence or his Holy Spirit from him. So David is earnestly pleading with God for his Holy Spirit to remain with him. The Holy Spirit was with David long before this, which is why when King Saul sinned and the Lord removed his Holy Spirit from him and an evil spirit came in his place, it was only David's worship in Saul's presence that gave him peace. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14 through 23. Let's now take a look at the New Testament. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 through 12. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff 
he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is John the Baptist prophesying about the then coming Messiah, Jesus. John explained that he only baptized with water, but Jesus would baptize them with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then one day he will separate the wheat from the chaff. The wheat will be gathered into the barn and the chaff burned with unquenchable fire. So what is John talking about here? Well, John is prophesying about two different events. The first is Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 through 4 says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The 120 in the upper room were baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, some may ask, how is this from Jesus if he wasn't even there? Well, John chapter 15, verse 26 through 27 says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. It was Jesus who sent the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, to them on Pentecost. Therefore, it was Jesus who baptized them with the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus confirms this in Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. Now, the second event that John the Baptist is prophesying is the final judgment. Matthew chapter 13, verse 36 through 43 says, Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Jesus is explaining that at the final judgment, the wicked will be separated from the righteous and thrown into the lake of fire as punishment. Now, if the lake of fire is the punishment of the wicked, how can it also be the Holy Spirit who is only sent to those who are a part of the bride of Christ, the church? That's a direct contradiction. The Holy Spirit isn't the punisher. The Holy Spirit brings conviction in hopes of leading one to repentance of sins to escape punishment. John 16 verse 7 through 11. He sanctifies you, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, and seals you for the day of redemption, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. To be in the Holy Spirit is to be transformed into a new and better creation, into the creation you were intended to be. It's not a punishment, but a reward for faithfulness. So then we can understand that the lake of fire isn't the Holy Spirit, who isn't the punisher, but the reprover and corrector. Even though the Holy Spirit isn't the punisher, he isn't one to upset, offend, or disrespect in any way, shape, or form. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 through 31 says, For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The Holy Spirit is the one protecting you from the wrath of God. If you turn on him or another member of the Trinity, especially Jesus because of the great price that he paid, you will outrage him and he will remove his protection from you and your punishment will be worse than that of the one who never heard. This doesn't say that the Holy Spirit turns on you and punishes you, but that you will fall into the hands of the living God without the protection of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, be very careful what you say against the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 3 verse 28 through 30 says, Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, in whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. This is Jesus warning the Pharisees that they were close to blaspheming the Holy Spirit because they said Jesus had cast out demons by the power of an unclean spirit instead of by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Now, this doesn't mean that you don't ask questions and seek to understand scripture. This means that you don't blindly or even ignorantly speak about the Holy Spirit, but you always speak about him with reverence and honor. It's he who guides, teaches, and dwells inside of us. John 16 verse 13, John 14 verse 26, and Romans 8 verse 9. So while you guys ponder all of these things, let's sum everything up real quick. The lake of fire is a punishment. It's falling into the hands of the living God without the protection of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't the punisher. He convicts, corrects, and teaches. He builds up and prepares us for the day of redemption when Christ will return for us and take us to be with him forever. The lake of fire is not the Holy Spirit. The lake of fire is not a reward. It's a punishment for refusing the free gift of salvation and rejecting the Holy Spirit. To say that the lake of fire is the Holy Spirit is quite close to blasphemy, and blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is a sin that will never be forgiven. Therefore, don't just speak blindly or ignorantly about him, but always with reverence and honor, seeking truth, discernment, and understanding from him. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. If you want to further grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website, holdtohope.org, or join our Telegram channel, Hold to Hope, where you will also receive an encouraging verse, quote, and lyric of the day. If there's ever a video of ours taken down on YouTube that you want to see, it'll always be available on our website, Telegram channel, and Rumble, so do with that information as you see fit. And until next time, God bless.